Good evening and welcome to VI Voices. I'm Emil Henderson tonight with Clint Ferris, Roy McFarlane, and one of our special guests who you will see quite often, Stacey Paskett. Welcome. Good 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 tonight is going to be a special episode of VI Voices as we go over our hot topics for the week, all that has been going on, and discuss these issues that are current and important today on going on in the Virgin Islands. Starting off, of course, with the legislative session for today. As you know, the legislature is in session um, for the, over the next two days, the 19th and the 20th of November. And it is rumored that on the 20th, they are going to adjourn Senedi, meaning that the legislature for the 29th legislature will cease to exist. Mm -hmm. That will be it. Correct. Um, not quite sure why they're doing it this early. Ordinarily, it's done sometime in December, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason, it's done this early. Senator O'Reilly moved this morning after some stuff was completed to adjourn Senedi, and she did not get the support. And then after that, How many pieces of legislation? Oh, I can't even begin to tell you. A barrage of special interests. Name a road after this person, name of this after that person, of resolutions here, there, and everywhere. A lot of special interest stuff came through, and it's still going on. Um, and tomorrow, it will continue. And I presume after tomorrow, they're going to adjourn Senedi. But this is when we got to watch what they're doing. Because this is when laws are passed, and we're not quite sure what happened. And next thing you know, you wake up, there's a new law. Correct. And I think we need to be overly concerned, because when you have, I think, seven, seven senators in there that are basically not going to be returning for the sen um, senator actually no, it'll be eight eight, eight, eight right, senators eight, eight will not the majority be are, are leaving are not, are not returning whether so, by being voted out or you're leaving on your own or by choice and, and and that we need to be concerned i i i i'm very concerned that this legislature continue to do some little things like these special interest legislations they, they do not exercise due diligence even when we name a road after somebody i don't think we just have to just name we need to set a stand then for you to meet before you can just get up and name a road. The legislature doesn't and follow standards. And, and they don't. You're, very, you're right about that, and that's a challenge. Yeah, they confirmed four judges today. And everybody knows what the bar felt about one of them. And well, what was the feeling? Well, the feeling was that she did not qualify under the statute. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with her judicial acumen, mm -hmm. nothing to do with her temperament, or whether she could learn the job. The statute requires certain things, and she missed them. But, but Senator um, Henderson, from what that's I heard, that's Senator Henderson. <laughs> oh, that's oh, not my name. Attorney. Oh, attorney Henderson. See, my attorney isn't my name uh, either. Uh, but my Emil. trade is attorney Henderson. Okay, Emil. Yes. Emil. From what I've been hearing on the radio and seeing in the newspaper is that the bar just didn't like the woman. That's what. They, that's what they. No, got, no, no, that's no, 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 no. That's not what they're saying. They're he, saying Emil didn't like, like the woman. Oh, see, right, right. that's what I'm. Yeah, yeah, let's right. get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Emil, Emil, Emil didn't, like, Emil didn't like the woman. But it's it's very typical for a bar association to present recommendations on judicial nominations. Mm. It happens as high up as the U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah that you look to see what a bar association, the American Bar Association would say about an attorney. And so for the bar association to come up with an opinion, they can't, in most cases, they're not always gonna be extremely favorable. And you take it for whatever you want. You, that doesn't True, mean you right. have but to. It, but, it it it, but very it. rarely, though, has the bar not supported a nominee. That's true. Very rarely, at least this bar. The only one in recent time that I can recall that we did not support was Judge Kendall. And, tell us and what happened? Kendall? Judge Kendall, once again, they, they cussed at the bar, did all kind of stuff to the bar, still appointed him, and everybody complained about Judge, about Judge Kendall. Every group you could think about complained about him, um, to the point that there are all these complaints filed against him. And so, but it happens all the time. And Judge Kendall just sent him down a, a rather large bill. He's telling them that he's going to be in litigation. Hundreds of yeah. thousands of dollars because he didn't get vacation pay. But I want to, so, so, so that nobody thinks the bar has been unfair to Miss Hines, assuming Judge Hines now. The statute requires for you to be a judge, it requires that you be a member in good standing of the Virgin Islands Bar. It requires that you be in active practice for at least five years immediately preceding your appointment and three of those five years must be in the Virgin Islands that's the requirement right for a regular judge if you're going to be appointed to the family court there's an additional requirement which is <clears throat> you must also be knowledgeable and trained in family law okay attorney Hines passed our bar exam last year May and was admitted into the bar on May 11, 2011. She has been in the Virgin Islands since 1994. Right. 
was specially admitted to work in the AG's office for the local government in 1994, just only to work in the AG's office left the AG's office and went to work for the federal government and has been working for the United States attorney for the United States government as an attorney there for the last 17 well, years. Well, the argument is going to be that they were Virgin Islands cases. They were matters affecting in Virgin federal Islands, court. Right? In federal court. Now, as a United States attorney, I know a couple of cases which wasn't federal right, cases. But, but as, anyway, as an assistant United she States wasn't, she wasn't barred. No, uh, this is the entire no. Time. she was barred in, in, the in, in Pennsylvania so. and in Georgia, but not in the Virgin Islands. Now. A U.S. attorney, if you are barred one place in the United States, you can go to any United States attorney's office in the, in the country and work. Right. But you can only stay in the confines of the federal court building. You can't come outside and work. Okay? Active practice to me and to a lot of the committee members means that you're able to go outside of your special area and work. Okay. Mm -hmm. And meaning you have a license in the state that you are working or the jurisdiction that you're working to practice law. And our position was she didn't have that. But until May of last year. So at a minimum, she would have had at least a year and 16 months as a part of our bar to technically be in active practice. But aside from that, the other part and is the family court experience. Nowhere in her resume None. does she indicate right. that she has ever done anything in the family law arena but where did the bar make this clear to the public that that was their position besides the legislature did they make that position clear within the periodicals because it was on the radio and people making it seems that basically the bar had it wrong right well here's what happened it was sent to the legislature as it's supposed to ordinarily what the legislature does when nominees come and they set a confirmation hearing, they will send an invitation to the bar to bring your comments. That's how we know to send out the questions. You've seen them before. So you mm -hmm. send out the questionnaires on the persons or whatever. You compile them and you come and you sit before the legislature and you report what the compilation is from the bar's results from their surveys. We never got an invitation. All of a sudden now this year, it's all, it was open to the public. The bar doesn't need a special, admission, a special invitation. Anybody could have come. That's a rule this time. It wasn't like that ever before. We always got an invitation to come and bring your comment. This time we didn't get that invitation, so we sent it down. Now, I was asked on behalf of the bar to go down anyway, and the hearing was at 3 o'clock. I had some place to be for 6 o'clock, and Denise Hines' stuff didn't start until 10 to 6. And so, this whole thing about the legislature saying, oh yeah, where's the bar? They're not here to, they just sent a letter, they're here to defend themselves. Well, one, you didn't invite us, and two, you started three hours late. And so all you heard was one side, at least all the people heard was one side, and now the Daily News put in a, a skewed version of it on one side. So the bar didn't have a chance to fully explain, but if anybody would read mm -hmm. the position, because it was in writing, that was sent to every single senator, you would see how they specifically detailed, and within the writing, the committee with the bar specifically stated that this determination does not speak to Attorney Hines' judicial acumen or her temperament. Simply that the statutory provisions are not met. Any That's it. Any of these writings sent to the media? The media has the, the Daily News. How do you think they was able to quote and misquote someone? I said Henderson argued. Henderson, right. I didn't argue nothing. I simply reported what the committee, other committee, came out to the Board of Governors, who then approves the report and it becomes the official position of the bar. So they have it. But you would think that you would write the whole thing out to explain what it is. But you're representing is. a bar, so Who? that you, Henderson. No, 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 no. Then you don't say Henderson, because Henderson didn't argue it. Isn't that what Henderson argued? The bar's position is the bar position. You say the bar's position is this. Not the bar me. felt this. Not Henderson argued. It's not an argument. What it is is the position. position Will there right? be a letter to the editors? Absolutely. The well, you know that, Stacey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. I don't do lying on me. You don't get to lie on me and keep going. <laughs> so, we'll be talking about this next week. On Correct. you, We're on you or the bar? The two of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're looking so, for the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, look out for it. Right. All right, enough of her. Now, the WAP alignment. Yes, this past mm -hmm. week, the WAP, there were some, um, I guess, what do you, what do you call them? No, we don't call them rubber man, but we don't call them no. I don't know. We don't call them man. Yeah. Whatever they are, sought to hold up some WAP online men as they were doing their work. Apparently, um, they were going after somebody and had them as a mistaken identity. 
and thankfully they realized that wasn't the right person and they ran off the person was unharmed right unharmed so so basically it wasn't because they were whopper line men no, why no. the bad man bad men went after them it was it a man appear who worked so. for whopper. whopper who did something that and it becomes it became retaliatory well right. we don't know that we don't know that okay no, no. I mean, but something happened that they went after this right. guy. correct okay so that's that right. they thought was the guy right. but right. it wasn't because he was working Wapa. for WAPA. it wasn't because the community is upset with the WAPA. you are right i don't think no, 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 that's okay. Okay. That we don't we just yeah. have to make that yeah. clear yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah yeah no it wasn't that okay no, no, no. but <laughs> now after that they were had the WAPA linemen had to be escorted by police to continue their work and now it looks like they want to have security with them no 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 okay. i think have enough police currently i i don't no know. i think it's also follow and in parts of and the, the line men and even if if it's their union now it's advocating this position because i'm not saying that the job isn't hazardous at times right but if you notice but not hazardous by crime, crime. Right. Not hazardous, yes right. it's, it's, it's not yeah it's not hazardous by affiliation right i think it's more hazardous because of sometimes of the lifestyle of some of these people who happen to be affiliated with WAPA. because this is not the first incident of WAPA employees being involved in some sort of an incident because this that's is true, true. And, and, and that you have to say well you have to remember it's a large set of employees Correct. right so the chances are you will have some who have issues just like you have government employees who have have been involved Correct. in things right. as well because it's a large set so we can't make it seem like because somehow there's something in the personality of wapa men that causes them no, to I'm, be more right. no no i'm not it's saying that involved in incidents than others right. Correct. i'm not right. saying it's exclusive to upper men but right. I, i'm saying to make it seem that but the, the, but since the, the, the closed in the new in thing the, correct oh, so yeah. <laughs> let's just make sure we have that real <laughs> the new in thing is wapa line men oh, and yeah. so this could have been a myriad of things it could be something untoward criminally or it could be some girlfriend issue some personal. or some yeah correct. And, yeah. and so I'm saying, I don't think the position should be the need police protection because of this incident. But what they need to do is find out who the guy That's that it. they thought looked like, which employee is he, and make sure that he don't go down the line with nobody. Correct. Is what they need to because, do. Because I think they already done the inve- they done a preliminary investigation to know it is not because of their work. Mm-hmm. Why? Right. They no, were attacked. No. Right. They so mistook then, an employee for it was looking for who they were going after. So then now, are we going to see an increase in either police not being where they need to be because they're escorting WAPA men? And that, so. Or an increase in the charges of WAPA over time because this new see, cost right, is right. being built in? And, 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 that, and you're right, it's directly related to this because uh, there's going to be an added cost if these um, things are implemented. For the for the um for, for, for presumably the safety of these wapper men, and it's going to be added cost to just to do business. So who is going to pass on to the consumers? Maybe we'll use the peace officer status to. Uh, oh, the federal employees. Oh, let's call it federal. Well, let's this. No, I'm I glad you brought, brought that, that in yeah. because yeah. let's talk about that. Right. As you know, they made some arrests the other day, mm-hmm. right? And some people were complaining because the VIPD weren't there. Listen carefully. Once you gave them peace officer status, they don't need to call you anymore. They can go make their own arrests. Mm -hmm. Before, they had to call the VIPD, and a VIPD Mm -hmm. person had to have been there with Mm -hmm. them to assist in 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 effectuating that arrest. Now that they have peace officer status, they can do whatever they want. But, 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 But hold on, hold on. But where's the sensitivity training and all that stuff that was supposed to take place? Oh, please. When, when Prior to... No, no, no. no, no. Again, I'm, I'm asking the law says something on the books. You have a point? Because <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. You're right. So, it's not going to happen. So, we, so They've got their peace officer status. They no longer need the VIPD to come with mm-hmm. them to arrest right, anybody. Right. They can go and do it on their own. Mm-hmm. And that's what you will see a lot more of that. And how convenient now with all of these things happening with these possible federal indictments, the police department, that is the VIPD, will never know when they come to pick up people. Correct. They just pick them up. Speaking of which, I, I heard from a businessman that there was a meeting with the police officers and the business owners in Frederickstead, and they informed them that September had 90 burglaries reported just on the island of St. Croix. Mm-hmm. So there's been an increase now in the type of crime, so I think this federal peace officer status is going to become more into play, and this is going to be an excuse 
But here's for the thing, show. though. Do you feel safer? Because Nelly Rivera was on here. She said she voted for it because for she children. wanted to feel safer. For children. For children so they can feel safer. Right. Um, remember that? Yeah. Well, remember that? She said that. Do you that's feel safer? That's interesting because Nelly Rivera, like myself, her children are young men. And that would not make me feel safer for my young sons to be Thank out you. at night with federal officers able to make arrests without any sensitivity training yeah. or without any understanding of the community in which they're doing these Correct. things. Because this is not about cultural immersion. They're not fully immersed in our culture. They stay on the periphery. And they have no intention so, of being so, um, fully immersed. Fully immersed and, in our community. And that's it. We have to look at this situation collectively. I personally believe the peace officer said that was about protecting and securing a particular set of people here in the island of Fos or in the Virgin Islands period, primarily St. Croix. I don't think it has anything to do with the local people or the native people of the island. I personally don't believe that. I don't think that peace officer status can solve any crime or prevent any crime, actually. They're going to just do what they're doing now. They're going to go around, they're going to pick up people with, without the sensitive training, they're going to do it in a manner in which some may seem as though is the, um, the old Jandam technique or the Jandam way, how they used to do it back when they just go up and lock up and stereotype young black men, and, and that's gonna be the norm. Some are, some, Senator O'Reilly or your children may even be victim of the same kind of risk. But I think I that believe. even on that group that it was supposed to be uh, give comfort to was a farce because it doesn't necessarily mean that there are going to be more federal officers here. There's no incentive for the federal government to bring additional officers down, officers down here to enforce the law to protect uh, well, they every segment the of the community be, is going the, to. The incentive will be with the, those who generate the revenue, those, the economic base, which we are knowing us. But there's a cost to the federal government bringing those officers down. Yeah, the, but and the who's cost, gonna pick up the that cost, cost is going to be covered with the big businesses, with corporate America, and that's my position, those who generate generating the money. That's what I believe. Oh, that, I, see, what I believe, that the people in them who voted for this law, they need to, to me, they should be going to, to their houses and start to clean up their business and close their doors because no longer are they going to be able to get a call and say, hey, you know, the boys are not coming for you. They can just go in and storm them. Because no, pop that. Think about it. Those who are engaged in public corruption, they should worry the most. That's what's going to happen. True. They should worry true, the most. True, because true, they true. don't need to notify the VIP. But they're not, they're not but they, are they currently worried? Huh? Oh, corrupt and in the start now today. No, of course not. A year or ten years ago, but, corruption being the norm around here. But, for, but, think, ab but think about it. They needed to inform the um, the local authorities here when they're gonna do, do any sort of operation. No Unless they were arresting you on federal property. Thank you. That's the only way they didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. If you're coming out of there, then they have to notify you because they really couldn't arrest you. But now they can think. So I think the, the, those people at the bottom may still have to worry but i do think it's those at the top definitely have to worry a lot more that's my whole thing about that my position well so, but i know, don't i'm not i, I wasn't in favor of the peace officer bill but i wasn't either so well neither were a lot of the virgin police department officers and it, see, that's, see, that's the part that had me they did not support this peace officer on this bill and once again the legislation listens to nobody but itself but, okay. and so they passed it above i mean against the police officers um, union, the PBAs. Well, the, the legislature will say then support. that they know whether the, what they've done is right or wrong by whether or not they're re-elected. But you see, but it's in that uh, they were uh, elected uh, because Senator Sanders, who was the, who was the chief proponent of this bill, yes, he, he got re-elected. The primary yep. sponsor. And, 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 and that's I think he got re-elected by default. But but we won't go there about the machine. But my <laughs> thing, because I know that's what you're trying to hint. But we're not going to go there. My thing about he had civil votes. You're saying? No, he said no. he's going to. Uh, he hinted about the selection uh, process. But that's exactly what I'm referring to. But I won't go there. My, my challenge is, is that I'm confounded more and more by our leaders, especially the legislature, that the people, which is government of the people, for the people, and by the people. Supposed to be. It's supposed to be, yes. And they continue not to listen to the people. I know they keep saying it's only a small group of voices you're hearing. And I, 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 to me, the, the electorate needs to start. So what, is, what does that say about the people? The, the, we will take anything. We will take anything. Of course we will. We will not agitate for a change. That's all we do. And we allow them to tell us, oh, for, for years, we, are, we have been in a depressed situation in the Virgin Islands. And one thing researchers are always told you about when you're in bad economic state, crime increases. And also retraining takes place. All of those things have been taking place for the last four to six years in our Virgin Islands. We have been on a decline. But we have been using borrowed money just trying to show up the ship. And then they told you that it was gangs. 
doing all of these crimes. And oh, so let's focus on the gang. But they weren't focusing on the critical issues in the Virgin Islands, which was one, addressing education, addressing training, quality of life issues. And that's the problem in the Virgin Islands. And our legislature is not going to focus on it. But do you think our legislature focuses on anything of value? No. That is that a, that's a rhetorical question, I think. Of course it is. Okay. But you know, what is so funny is today, in one part of the session, Senator Nelson, when we were debating the judges, wow. Senator Nelson got up. And let me tell you something. He ripped in to <laughs> Senator Russell. He didn't debate yeah, yeah. anything. <laughs> How uh, he took his time oh, wow. was to repeat and told yeah, Senator Russell that the 20th legislature is the worst legislature ever. He has yeah, been yeah. the worst senator ever. Oh. He can't wait for this to oh adjourn gosh. so he can get out of the legislature. He's already been reprimanded and, for his and behavior. And he's looking yeah. forward yes. to the 30th yeah, legislature. Yeah, he's looking forward to the 30th When you're not here. He's not no, here. there's no senator <clears throat> more befitting to rip into Russell than Senator Nelson. Want me to tell you why? Yeah, I want you to tell me why. In 2010, when Senator Russell was seeking um, re-entry into the body mm -hmm. Senator Nelson supported him mm -hmm. Senator Nelson helped to put him back there and the first thing he did was send Senator Nelson, Nelson down the river right. and I do be believe Senator Nelson have all right because this legislature more, no more there has been, not been any other senator that has been more maligned by this legislature and the, and the, and, and the other one, and the previous one, and the previous one than Senator Nelson well, so, so I think it's befitting. Well, there's really nothing, no respect in the legislature, if you ask me, because nobody really deals with the issues. They take the entire time to talk about all these incidental things that have nothing to do with what you should be debating about. Correct. At all. And so, so you never get anything from that. Who and what are going to debate against what and against who? I mean, there's no opposition. So how you can debate about anything? No, so there, there are opposition. What's the opposition no, no, from the, whom? No, the opposition is... He has his position for his personal interest. Right, but that's my point. It's individual. Uh -huh. It's individual is what we deal with. We deal with the party structure. No, but, but, but outside of the party structure, my thing about it is we have individual ideas. The, the biggest problem is that at, at the end of the day, all of them are self-serving. And at they the have, end of the day, none of that thing. They have that. different philosophies, but at the end of the day, they are self-serving for their own interest and not the people's interest. Because we have, we have not develop a, 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 a sound strategic plan. Look at our, look at our three towns. And we haven't put any monies into our three, three towns. Go to Charlotte and Mali, Christensen and Fredericksted, deplorable. Right. One street deep. And we, we need to focus on that. They, play, they, play, they continue to play divisive politics between St. Croix and St. Thomas, typically. Mm -hmm. Just to say they're doing their job, but they're not. It's one Virgin Island, one treasury. Right. And we're not, and we continue to listen to them and fall prey to the, to, the, to the nonsense that they spew. And I think we as people need to do better and hold them accountable. No! One Virgin Island. If you're going to push that, let's focus on Charlotte Mali, Christian St. Fredericksted, focus on St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix, collectively, and focus on the quality of Asian. But you talk like, you're, like you're speaking like logical people. Right. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not there. So, or he's not in there yet. Right. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> He's well, don't worry, we're working on that. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking was it may be more interesting in this coming legislature because it appears that there's going to be a majority yeah, that a 12 is member majority. a 12 member majority yeah. that's Democrats. based on the Democratic the Party, right. which should then have a platform, which would then mean that there should be concrete things that they're going to be working towards during the 30th legislature. Cool. You just saw a majority that was a hodgepodge of individuals, right. and so they never came out with saying these are the three or four. Um, things that we say we're going to work on in this legislature. So let's see if that's going to happen with it's this. It's supposed party. to be like that, you know, but I still hear an individual talking about battling issues and not coming around the, the, the party like how you're suggesting. But you know the beauty of it is, Stacey's sitting on the table. She ran on the Democratic ticket. I hope the party's now going to bring all of those people together who ran on the ticket and the party and leaders the and right bosses ideas. to start to come up with one collective platform because this is how you advance the party, move it forward and get it done. What so what so have you been invited to help tailor the me platform? to speak outside of school? <laughs> 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 they have been meetings. I have not been invited to the formal um, leadership meetings. They have officers who I understand are meeting. But I have had discussions and I know there has been discussion about having a platform. Um, the primary was so close to the general election and I do believe that there had been some movement 
for them to be even campaigning on a platform. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll see what's going to happen. But see, here's a problem with the Democratic Party. <laughs> because the, I've always had a problem with, which is probably why I'm like over here on the side. When you're deciding to run on a Democratic ticket, mm -hmm. you are coming to what we've decided the platform is. You don't come with your own right. and rule, so you run as a Democrat. Which means that at the, well, Emmett Hansen was the, was the state at the time. Which means your role was to get the party together, set aside what this platform for this party is going to be. Who all want to run? This is the parameters of the platform. Mm -hmm. You frame your if you run on our ticket, you frame on our party ticket. You frame your platform on the general platform. You can choose what in there you like the most to push forward mostly, but you don't go outside of the Democratic Party platform so That's that happening. when seven wins, the Democratic Party can be comfortable in pushing that seven because they're in line with our party. Nationally, the Democratic Party comes up with what their platform is. Everybody that runs for the senator or House of Representative, their platform can't be outside of what the Democratic Party has set up. Here, you can do whatever you want, well, that however was a, That was the position I pushed, is that we should use, the Democratic Party should use the national platform and determine and what it. elements are relevant to the Virgin Islands. And, and that's what I did, and I like that. But also then we need to start to say, we are two years out from another election cycle. Mm -hmm. Let's start planning for the convention. Let's start to think about how we're going to make, to do, have the primary for the party. Let's start thinking about how we're going to get this party Back to where it's at. Sounds like they're doing that, man. They invited the Democratic what? leadership team and all of that. You were part of that? No. No, no but don't worry. They, they, they will be doing it. Don't why. No, they will be doing it. They say it appears as though they are. Them, no, no, because no, that, <laughs> requires, <laughs> that requires a confident group of leaders to allow people who may have difference Differences of opinion right. Right. to be there. You are not allowed to have a difference of opinion in a Democratic Party from whatever is the leader at the time. So the government is the leader now, and he has a position. Right. If you disagree with it, you're somehow against all of them, and you can't be a part of the group. Well, now the governor is the t titular head, but yeah. the head of the party is the state chair. Cecil, Cecil Benjamin. Benjamin. But no, but in all intents and purposes, the governor is the state chair slash the titular head, mm -hmm. because you can't do anything unless he agrees with it. And if you disagree somehow, you're against the party, you're committing treason, stand to the side. And the problem with that is, is in two years when this governor is not governor, there'll be a new crown prince. And uh, that will be the person or who they princess. want to put, or princess, that they'll push to do something. Mm -hmm. And then whatever he or she says, then everybody will forget who John DeYoung is and they'll be all clamming right. to him to do whatever he or she says. And, do. and that's the problem about it. And they have not developed this leader from what this leader comes and they are not anoint this leader. And that's it. But you don't know how they pick them? Want me to tell you how? You how pick they pick them based on whoever they believe is popular enough to win. Mm -hmm. You could be dumb as dirt. No. And if you are popular enough to win, then no. that is the person that they put forward. I, like I think you have to pass the smell test. No, no, no. 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 If you're popular enough to be the winner, then you're the new crown prince or princess, and that's who they'll follow. So we have a problem. Don't even have to be Democrats. So we yeah, exactly. Oh, Just be it for the time. Oh, oh man. I'm that's not sure. a little sure. sure. Boy, it's not lying. You know, that's I'm, not that's sure. really you know I'm not sure if that's entirely the case because there are two positions, right? Mm -hmm. And quite often you've seen that if the one top position doesn't meet a certain criteria, then maybe you look to the second person to meet another group of constituency, like a grassroots or the more populous or the more popular individual, if you have someone who meets another group of people. Let, let's, 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 let's assess that. that. No, 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 we're going to finish this one here because I need to make sure we understand. I, I want to go on to something else. Now, let's, let's assess this. No, 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 let me keep it. Let's go back to 2002. Go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. You had Governor Turnbull. Correct. Running for re-election. Uh -huh. Vargas Richards. And you have Vargas Richards. Uh -huh. And you had John DeYoung. Correct. Right? Okay. John DeYoung, who and was, don't forget, was Paul Arnold was on the ticket. And who's right. running mate? Right. right. And Paul Arnold. Yeah. Was on the ticket. was not a Democrat, no, remember? Well, wait, that's yeah. not, yeah, I'm coming to that. But when we return, because I want to start the conversation and then we have to stop. So we'll be back, we'll be back in a minute. Oh.
and welcome back to VI Voices as we're doing our hot topics. Well, we, before we went to break, we were talking about assessing mm -hmm. this issue of when Boyd said you don't have to be you don't have to be a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about in 2002 when Governor Turnbull ran for re-election and our current Governor DeYoung also ran, this time with Paul Arnold. Mm -hmm. oh, and there were some other people that ran as well. That year, Chucky Hansen ran yes. and some other people ran. Mm -hmm. um, and Governor Turnbull won decisively. Right. Mm -hmm. okay? um, Governor DeYoung, his headquarters shut down at 7.30 because it was right around the corner from um, where my office used to be. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't find anybody. That year, he called the Democrats Democrats, and there were this and there were that and on and on and on and on, right? Mm -hmm. Fast forward four years to 2006. Governor Turnbull can't run again. So the Democratic Party got to find somebody the, who can run, the, right? But think about it. The same non-Democrat. This was a non-Democrat yeah. that they were calling switch. John D. Wolf. Absolutely. Remember that? And Absolutely. these are the same folk that were calling him John D. Wolf. All the Democratic Party. Yeah. From his... President yeah. Lieutenant Governor, down yeah. to some of the people he yeah. appointed yeah. all over the place. Now in 2006, you had Edgar Ross run, he mm -hmm. lost. You had Vargrave Richards, who had been a lifelong Democrat, had given so much to the Democratic Party, didn't even win. But, uh, he, but Vargrave but, decided to run late. very, very late. It don't matter what he no. said to run. Yes, it does. No, exactly. You know what doesn't, you know what doesn't matter to someone decided to run? This was the person that was a part of your party forever, never changed. This other person was a person that threw rocks at your party, called your party, and four years ago, you were also throwing rocks at him and calling him because of names, and somehow he becomes the person that's going to be the leader for your party into the next election. I mean, Stacey's out to write about something. I agree with Stacey. As the sitting lieutenant, as the sitting lieutenant governor, right. you don't hem and ha, you don't exactly. mm, uh, uh. Right, right, right. He was supposed to be the first man the first out the gate. Yeah. He allowed Mark to beat him out the yeah, gate. And then there are other yeah, people who've already then made commitments elsewhere because he hasn't made, he hasn't firmed up what he's right. going to do. Right. Thank you. Well, that's true. By but Ma I, but I don't Mark. understand how as a Democrat, an honest, true one, you can make a commitment to somebody that's not. Thank you. But see, that's the, the problem. In your own party. That, the party should have already made sure that Vargrave was Var 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 supposed to. Could, thank you. Um, and, but, and also Vargrave too, as the lieutenant governor, should have said, I am going to run for governor. Blam. He didn't, he didn't bring the party together and say, this is what my intentions that's are. That's true. And that's that, true. so you have to blame Vargrave. So is that, that going thing. to happen in this one? In no. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you straight out. Whether you like the president, lieutenant governor or not, you have to give him credit. He has not failed at his job. He has not failed. Oh, you mean he, he has No, he hasn't failed at his job. What do you mean? He has what? whole serve. He, he has done, he has <coughs> not bring any scrutiny to his position. No, has he, he been out there? He's scrutiny to his What, because of the well, problem? No, that isn't his. Why? No, yes, because of the taxes. No, 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 we last him again. Um, um, Francis. Francis. Lieutenant uh, Governor we'll Francis. Yeah, the <laughs> first. Lieutenant <laughs> Governor Francis didn't have to do anything because he wasn't. I mean, thank he you. He was so, there. He was like the Queen of England. So, right? so he where hasn't. you're there, so you, you have a title, but you don't really do much. Chunky, he hasn't done it. Which I think was more of a benefit to him <laughs> than <laughs> detriment. Thank you. That's but that doesn't you necessarily be necessarily be a, um, a benefit. Because you want to see that someone has demonstrated that they do have some leadership yeah, if they want to take the next position. Well, it might be a benefit so, to the extent that he may not be hauled off with the peace officers. Correct. But may I ask a question? Has he not exercised leadership out of his office? No. He has he assembled may, he the may, whole He may not be hauled off with the peace officer, but he ain't going to be no governor. But he, no, 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 but we're not going to do that. You're going too far. You're going too far, boy. You know what? I'm going to say that. You know who it is. And if it is, then. I'm going to make a prediction tonight. The next governor is going to be Chucky Hansen. <laughs> so you're, you're saying, saying that no, you're saying that prediction. it's based on yeah. a my popularity. prediction is Chucky Hansen will be the next popularity. Number. It has nothing to do with no, anything other than popularity. You do not have to have any kind of educational thought, any kind of logical sense. You just have to be popular enough with enough money to backing to get yourself into where you need to be. I can't. I can't think that about Virgin Islanders. No, no. Okay. But let me put it to you. I, I wouldn't go as far as saying she would make it as governor, but that is a case of the future. Hey, I mean, I am never taking that, the discussion uh, to I another level. I, I am making a prediction. You remember, though, that she's Virgin win. Islanders have repeatedly in its history shown people that know your place. I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that, but this it's will be a, a non-incumbent. It's fun for you to be in one position, 
But don't think you could be in the other. No, no, but oh, hold on. But the Virgin Islands has continued to change the rules up. Because when you go on radio uh -huh. and say, because, and I, I don't feel any which way about Denise Hines up or down, but when you go on radio and you put a newspaper and you talk all over the airwaves that because she's a native Virgin Islander, because she's from Grove, she deserved a position because there's, uh, there's opposition coming from other Virgin Islanders. Well, it's just apparently, that, I, apparently I was born right. someplace else. And it's just because she born here, that's why we are against no, Apparently I wasn't and born here. I, that's not fair, that's foul. That is, that's that not is foul. Apparently there's also another requirement to be a judge is that you have to be from Grove. <laughs> We won't go there, but that, but my thing is that's the problem over and over again. We keep changing up. Yeah, we people have to know their place, but we also have to expect more from our own, and that's what we have not been doing consistently. Sure, it's like the same thing that you hear on the national level when black groups critique President Obama, then they're cried foul. Right, but they will say we are pushing him to be a better president. Mm -hmm by holding him to a criteria that we would hold any president or any, or right. as a black president that he has to meet. In the same manner, we should do that to our own local officials. Correct. Yeah. But, we, but, but we give them a pass. But we don't do that. We though. give them a pass. We don't do that. And, and I think if you look at, and the scripture says about the, the tree, you should know, you should know a tree by its fruit. So what, do you, what does he say about the Virgin Islands? We have tree? orange trees bearing mangoes. <laughs> and we have passion fruit trees bearing sugar apples around here because nobody is following any rules around here no. everybody is doing whatever they want and i'm almost to the point that if you like it i love it whatever you want don't find me stay out of my lane and i'm good i'm i'm, I'm almost to that point it's sad but i'm almost it's there because sad. People, at what point is that going to end right? because when, people are doing whatever they want and what is sad about it is that you know people who know better know better right mm -hmm. but because they're receiving some benefit from it it's kind of okay you see I you think see? it's and that's a problem. It's a, like a flamboy. It's like a, a tamarind tree being shak shak because the shak shak is not going and the tamarind tree we eat it. We say, oh, it's tamarind, and it's not tamarind. Yeah. And that's the problem we have in the Virgin Islands. Yeah. Because we're not holding anybody accountable. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And, and that. So, and and see, that's a problem. And that's our responsibility. And and I keep saying that we have as young people, as leaders, leaders, what emerging leaders are leaders already on the spot. We need to start to demand more. We need to put forth our platform. What we think our Virgin Islands should look like. And unite. what we should we expect. Yeah, but that requires people, that that requires people to have independent thoughts. That's the problem. And, and but we to... should be growing leaders, in my opinion. I am a leader. Mm. Uh, and I don't, I don't need validation. Nobody has to tell me I am. I know I am. And so when I am grooming somebody, I am grooming them to be a leader with an independent mind. I don't want you to agree with everything I say. I want you to be a leader, but you can have your own mind and do what you're supposed to do. We're not growing leaders with independent minds. And you're right. Want me to tell you why? I, Senator Bryan came here and he presented wonderfully. But you know the funniest thing about th that information that Senator Bryan had? A lot of the information that Senator, that's available to Senator Bryan, it sits there in a library, sits there in a book, and he presents it to you and we soak it up. But none of us is going your own, and picking own, up that pick same up. book and yeah. reading it and looking for the map. Absolutely. So, so when you say we, we are, we, you're right. At times we are not leaders because we don't even lead within ourselves and find the time to find the information to, to validate it. Is what Senator Bryan is saying is true. Is what Senator Nelson so you said say, is true. You say you're a leader, but you're a leader of whom and of what? You should my, be a leader position, of, of initially. Correct. But then you can you, you we need to unite and form some kind of organization or some kind of community that can do that. There's the numbers is what matters. You know, but you know who I respect as leaders? I respect the person who makes a decision, an informed decision, and sticks by it. I don't have to agree with it. But I can deal with you if you decide this is what I believe and this is my decision and go by it you ain't vacillating back and forth all over the place or curry fear into one group because this is how you want to do it yeah. which is why at least for Senator Brian at least I know where he stands all the time right. there's no confusion with him there's right. no back and forth with him Consistent. you don't have to he's like a necessary person in a community he's very because he has to push mm -hmm. in order for us to kind of open up our minds to certain people. well part of the leadership that he people like uh, Senator Bryant and even like some of us because Clint I don't know about you but I don't consider myself a young leader because I don't 
I've come to the truth that I'm no longer young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna come to that truth. <laughs> so, part of leadership is mentoring mm -hmm. and developing the next mm -hmm. leadership. And when you were talking earlier about when are things going to change, it's only going to change, and history has shown us that things, governments only change when the youth become the catalyst for that change. If they have independent minds. Thank and you. that's for the and leaders here's what, we're gonna come to back bring to this them story. to that. You talk about what's on the radio, I talk about, about native daughters and all this other stuff or whatever, as if I'm not one. Um, and you have these articles, and I'm attacked because I present a position for the bar that the bar sanctioned. Correct. Right? On an issue that is unpopular to a lot of people. Right? I'm strong enough to, that just goes over my head. I'm not changing my mind. So you're free to talk all what you want, to print all what you want. But everybody isn't like me. And so you might get some people who are turned off by that. So then they become closed. Yes. Right. And they don't express anything. Mm, they don't do anything. And that's how other people who don't mean goodwill to us are allowed to fester and grow in this community. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to take a position, even if it's unpopular, mm -hmm. if you believe it's right, and keep going with it. That doesn't happen here. Here, whatever seems to be working at the time, that's where people start to go at the time. Well, because if you go against the grain, then you're, you could be destroyed. But, and you're saying that's you're, it. You're right. But, and you you're right. can. Because, In a lot of different ways. Yes. And, and we, do, we, we need to we talk about slavery is no longer wrong. But tr slavery has transcended. Because well, like the, the plantation is no longer a physical it's, plantation. plantation. The it's plantation is a, a mine, it's an economic plantation because we know if we are separated from our jobs, that becomes an undue hardship and we don't know what we're going to do. And we're not prepared to say, you know, they separate me from my job, but I'm going to hold the line and I'm going to go out and march and demand what's right. Imagine, right? This government floated almost $500 million for all kind of crap. Took a bill wrong, wrong place, the all these different things. People can't find money where it's supposed to be. The legislature can't find $6.9 million. Nobody know where it is. But you turn around and you tell the people that the government got the money, take 8% of your check and you turn around and put them people right, right back, back to office. They should have taken 16. Thank you. Because how you can sit there in your good mind and allow these people to go back in there on the chance that say, oh, they sent the Senate to bring us the documents yet? No. Okay and tell us that, oh, the government has no money. But after they take your 8%, they turn around and get another set of money to do things, millions of dollars to do things with, and then turn around yeah, and lay people off. And grocery receipts. Raise receipt. your grocery receipts, tax money, and, and businesses. And, and if you take a look at the Virgin Islands, roads are deplorable. Yeah. The boardwalk in Christian State is horrible. Yeah. And these are the same small business owners, the same People are working private industry or government industry who voted for these folk, yeah. and I you're telling at, me I, I things in, are better. I, I consider you know, looking for solutions. We all know them situations, hey. we all know what to mm. do. I, I wholeheartedly agree with Miss Blasket when she referred to the children. What are we doing about the children? I offer the that's essential. That's where we got to start, and that's who we got to develop to be these leaders that we got. Let me tell you where to start. start. How do you do that? It starts right now with our How action. How do you empower them, children? You start with our action. You start with our action. I'm telling you, if their parents had gotten up, who, the parents are teenagers. No, no, but hold on. But if some the of the majority parents, of the parents are teenagers, who teach the parents? But is she right? But some of their parents are old, are my age. Some of them may be in the same category as Miss Plaskett. They, you know, because she said she was young, so I'm not making sure I made sure well, I said my age. Young, and young, is, young to me is 35 and under. Okay, so no. 35. No, I'm not 35. You are 37. We're not 35. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. We're rounding down. <laughs> <Yeah, no problem. laughs> we, we know he flunked back. <laughs> we're, we rounding. Flunk back. we're rounding down. That's why he's a lawyer. But, but, right. take, but take into consideration this. If they had gotten up and agitated each step of the way, they would be modeling behavior. Say, no, I stand for something. And they're gonna tell your children what you stand for. When you see, when you could explain oh, to what? children, Clint, really I understand what you're saying. Okay. You say if they had stand up, stand up and what? What's the foundation? Stand you need up. to address the foundation. Let me explain what the foundation is. What? Getting up and actually participating in your community, not just taking it. No, I'm telling you why. 
if this they we keep saying the people don't see this as a community yeah, but, begin no with. no but if you keep saying he was that we need the Puerto Ricans over here from Puerto Rico to agitate. Oh, we need there's the people from Puerto Rico to agitate. There's a reason why, the reason why the, my position is the reason why these people are standing up. There's a reason why they take a position because of their foundation. Yes, but we do have a foundation, but in the foundation. We do not. We I mean, do, but we are we not teaching. We, yeah, right. but we it's as there, adults are not just teaching. And there other stuff. Yeah, we adults are not teaching the foundation. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, even though, and tomorrow's show, we're going to sit. Because we're having a show tomorrow with Miss Gums come again. Right. And we're oh. talking about family issues. Okay. Because there's no way that I am a parent and my 14-year-old is going to make decisions for herself or himself in my home. There's a, we need to stand firm as parents. We need to stand firm as leaders and say, you know, we have rules here. We have values. But we can't and we stand, must encourage but see, them. But remember, children are going to look at what, at what the adults are doing. They're going to hear a word. You know what I'm and what the adults are doing in this community right now isn't anything for them to emulate. Thank you. Right. Right. Okay? And, and the ones who the are doing now. well, the ones who are doing what they should be doing, they're the ones that are chastised and thrown to the side mm -hmm. as if what you're doing is the wrong kind of thing to do. You know, I go and maintain it over and over and over. Nobody who hasn't paid taxes for 20 years should be making any laws for me. Oh boy. Okay? See? But 5,450 something people felt that that person should be in the legislature. Thank you. Okay? Okay. And you couldn't get your tax money. She paid the price. You okay. couldn't get your tax money. Why? Because the government couldn't make any money. So, right? Okay. So, so well, if they I mean. look at that, <laughs> right? Then if they look at that kind of behavior, then how do you expect them to change if the people that they're seeing are the people who are not doing what they should be doing? But Emil, before we went on, one of the topics that you said we would talk about was one of those things that alleviate some of that, which is ethics laws. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. Is, which we don't have. Right. Which we don't have. And you're right. And you see, and that's where, because if you have a legislature, mm -hmm. on which, and you still be talking about where does the foundation start? It starts right there. If we're not modeling the right behavior, that if anything goes, that they can go into this body that make laws, but they themselves are above the law. Well, the foundation but, for the legislation, right? The foundation I'm referring to is for the children, from a, no, but from, let, a, from, a, from, a, from a from a kindergarten level. Let right? me give you an example. example. The NBA. Right. If you just get charged with a crime, they don't sanction you. We have a sitting official who's been charged with, with some allegations. He's still part of the body. They censure a senator for, for less than what he has done. Right. And I, have you seen anything coming off of the legislature to deal with the senator? At least just to say, no, yeah, you've been caught up. You need to not be a part right now. No. Take care of what you need to it's take care of. It's not going to happen. We are the rules for that. But, you know, and people think of it as always ethics laws as being detrimental to individuals. But it's also a framework that they can then hide behind. So if you're doing things that are within the law, if people have a question about gray areas, you can say, no, I've done this, and it fits within the law, and therefore I'm protected by it. Now, Clifford Graham has said one of his first pieces of legislation he wants to do is create ethics laws. I know, Stacey, you have worked a lot with ethics laws on, in Congress. In Congress, yeah. Um, to, and nobody's ethics laws are stricter than theirs. Right. Um, there's so many little things they can't do um, on the Hill that here senators here you can do whatever yeah. it's almost zero hard. campaign really stuff commingled with your uh your staff Strict sending bill. out things from your from your staff from your office totally unacceptable behavior correct and it's in that part now i keep mentioning private business now think about all the major league sports they keep marking themselves as a family as family centered industry but if they allow their players to do drugs to, and to, to beat their wives and to do all of those different things. Do you think they will be able to appeal to, to families and say, okay, this, we have a wholesome business? They know, they know they cannot do that if they allow this behavior to take place. So one of the most, one of the things they put in their country is about personal behavior. Mm -hmm. To make sure that they know. Yeah, they're called moral clauses. Moral clauses. To make sure that, yes, you, you're going to make millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you want to keep making these millions of dollars, you must behave responsibly. But remember, the election board, <coughs> the senators, and the no attorney general definition. says there's no definition of moral turpitude in territory. So your argument is great. What about the, more, um, but, the but, model code? But let me, but wait, but let me share that with you though, because oh, this, I was doing research for another matter. 
and you don't I came across, research I, yeah because you know and that's why i charge what i charge and i do very well because i do my work <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing research for another man i came across a case by the united states not the united states by the virgin island supreme court and lo and behold would you not see that the virgin island supreme court has already adopted a definition for moral turpitude <laughs> what well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it and I said, wait a minute, it's called N. Ray Campbell. And in, in, Ray. in Ray Wilson J. Campbell. How do you spell the last name? Campbell. C A M P B. How do you spell okay. it? N. Ray. How do you spell it? I N R E. R E. It's Latin for. Um, in the matter of. In the matter of. Or in regards to. Give me one minute here. Wow. So they have defined moral turpitude? Uh, hold on. Who's they? The, 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 the Virgin Supreme, Supreme, Court. Supreme Court. The highest appeal court in the Virgin Islands. And yes, it is in Ray Campbell. It is Supreme Court BA number 2009-230. If you go to the Supreme Court website, mm -hmm. go to Unpublished Opinions for 2009 and you will see it on there. So I'm doing the research. It's an unpublished so when opinion. did the Attorney General's opinion come out? He hasn't the, given one. He says that matter. there isn't one. Mm -hmm. oh. But what is odd is, and I want to be sure that we talk about it because it's very important. So people don't think I'm acting like I'm crazy. It does deal with the Bar Association and attorneys, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the issue of defining moral turpitude is what, what was there. And the oh, Supreme Court wrote and they cited to some cases and said and they talked about the model rules and then they went in to cite into a case called in ray ham um talking about good moral character and any doubt of it being received in favor of admission but here's what they say good moral character is traditionally defined as the absence of conduct imbued with elements of moral turpitude which mm -hmm. includes qualities of honesty fairness candor trustworthiness observance of fiduciary responsibilities, respect for and obedience to the laws of the state and the nation, and respect for the rights of others and for the judicial process, and they cite to the name of the case. Here's what the Supreme Court then says. Applying this standard, this court agrees. That means they have implicitly adopted that definition yes. as moral turpitude. Mm -hmm. How did the Attorney General not find this case when it involves an employee of his department oh, to tell God. them that there is no definition of it moral turpitude. It was unpublished. Turpitude. You said it's an unpublished. But it involves his employee. So you would have well, got a copy of that. And you can go to the I Supreme know. Court and I find know. it. I know. So let's see what's going to happen uh, with this. But it happen. appears that we do have a you definition correct. of moral see, turpitude. And, and that's what I was going to say. Oh, we're talking um, about in acting these You know, nothing, I don't let nothing slip. But is there still <laughs> a matter before the court? Before it is a matter before the court because it's right now before the. You know, George Moore filed a claim um, against the Board of Elections regarding uh -huh. Chucky Hansen, and it's currently before Judge Lewis. Wilma Lewis. Wilma Lewis, Lewis. before so the district court. We have all these laws, all these holy patas, and they're talking about enacting more laws. My position is who going to enforce the laws? Who going to be brave enough to get a testicular fortitude to stand up Nobody. and enforce the laws? Nobody. That's the, that's the issue. Nobody. And are we going back when again to the foundation claim the right high tide no, but they got people developing do. the individual but, but to see, that point? Well, do we have in our AG's office a racketeering or a public corruption Psycho. branch? Oh, public, oh, branch? No, we don't. We, we don't. have a white collar division, uh -huh. but we don't have like how the federal government has a public corruption branch. We don't have that. Although, with these latest arrests, I see that there are all these people, and some of them I know from other cases I work with them. Um, I see that they, they're calling this a department, and so I don't know if they're here like they were before, but I know they sent back Attorney Murphy, who had handled that trial with um, Andrew, what's his name? Um, Andrews, Ashley Andrews, Ashley, and yeah. handled the matter with Senator Hansen and all the other people, but he went back to his home state. And so let's see if this will continue, but we don't have one of those in our... Um, in our department, in our local government. And the question would become, do you trust that in the way, because people seem to think that the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands is the governor's lawyer. But he That's is. not the case. No, he, he is. is a yeah, but what I'm saying is, He's supposed the, to be attorney the, is the attorney right. for the people, the governor's right. lawyer mm -hmm. is the chief counsel to the governor. Mm -hmm. and that's in, who not is in there. this case. It doesn't and appear that way. And that's well, what that's why I always trust. have, in, if you see in the court, in the court dockets here, that they've changed it from it used to be the government yes. of the Virgin Islands versus people. whomever. 
Now it says the people of the Virgin Islands versus whomever. And I contend that it is not the people of the Virgin Islands versus individuals because the people didn't elect the exactly. person who is representing them. Well, you know, you're not know, you know, you know, going to agree to that, right? Mm. Because I just think that would foster more corruption. I don't think so. If I'm going to be putting in money. Corruption, no, the corruption they, exists already. No, but what, we have people, no, who are what you need to do is they need to restructure the attorney general's position. The attorney general's on too many boards that are intertwined with the executive branch. There's no need for the attorney general to be on the port authority. There's no need for the attorney general to be, I think he's on white though. There's no need. He doesn't mean no, that. Right. His only role should be protecting the people of the Virgin Islands because technically, let's say um, Diageo comes in, right? And Diageo comes in, I don't use them. Let's say another company, a phantom company comes in and they're polluting certain areas. The attorney general has to file a lawsuit on behalf of the people, like how attorney generals file like what, what, is on, if he, what does his being on any of those boards have to do with some of these other because matters that are if in fact the if in fact if in fact, if his fact we are on these boards that may have adverse relationships to the government or to the people it is his duty to protect the people how does he do that if he's sitting on a board but think about it for these people but contention is he's his sitting his in the cabinet no but think right. about so right. the exactly. yeah, but, 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 but the u.s attorney general sits on a cabinet too mm -hmm. but he is yeah but he is not like how our attorney general is our attorney general is on boards because of our statutes but the u.s attorney the u.s attorney the united attorney, attorney general once he's appointed he almost becomes separate separate from Correct. the president mm -hmm. he's not there within the press he's yes the only time he comes in to give advisory opinions mm -hmm. on certain issues but he's not all into what the president is happening and on this border that mm -hmm. doesn't happen at the federal and that's, level but yeah. that's yeah. how but on state levels there Many are attorney generals, generals that are elected but, elected. but remember in those but states they they have have a, but remember in those states you have attorney generals attorney general and they also have what they call state's attorney's offices right they'll have and a lot of attorney generals don't do a lot of the prosecutions that the state attorney's offices will do so that attorney general is really doing what an executive branch member would be doing so you're saying that he should remain being appointed but get off of some of these boards and you think that he should get out of some of the board and his role should be clearly defined as to what he is as opposed right now he's just pretty much open i say he should be elected I and so i don't trust the people yeah. here to do that because when that happens that's how you get well i i can i can i put money to your campaign we're not prosecuting clint mm -hmm. That's what happens. Yes, it could be happening now, but you it's just worse. Talk about him bringing cases against Diageo, for instance, in regards to the people. Mm -hmm. He was appointed by the governor, so he serves in the interest of the governor. The governor is the one who brought Diageo. No, no. He was he's he's not in the interest of the he people. He was not he's made by the governor. He's supposed to. He is supposed to serve the interests of the people. He's he, supposed to, but he's not. But think about it. He was nominated by the governor and appointed or by maybe the Senate. Or maybe, or maybe With the advice and consent of the Senate. Senate. Maybe so, what we sh the, the Attorney General's term should be longer than the governor's term. Mm. Maybe that's a possibility. Okay. I don't know. They need a lot. But I'm not, I'm not yet. Just like, how I'm, just like how I'm not for electing judges, I'm not for electing a person that has authority to decide who gets prosecuted and who doesn't. That's too much power for somebody to gain money. But what about if he were to have judges in the criminal division be elected and judges in want, the civil division be appointed? I don't want appointed. not one judge here elected anywhere <laughs> for anything. So let me just make that you publicly clear. the people. And so I ain't sending them to the courts because I don't want to, tomorrow, the next thing I know, I get some sanction, <laughs> some grievance filed against me. I got to go report to the court because I talked about the court. So let's let that go. Anyway, we're at the end of tonight's show. And Stacey... <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. You, you were all gentlemen <laughs> you were awesome. and I enjoyed myself yes, you. immensely. You will see a lot more Stacy um, as she's here more, more and more. And so remember to make your voice be heard. Your voice can make a difference. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.